So getting a bit more advanced now, what we're going to do to add even more variety is modulate the start position of the sample, which I can do manually just by dragging this playhead around on the waveform display. Can be a good idea if you're switching to different parts of the sample just to make sure there's a little bit of attack on there, just to get rid of any clicks that might occur. So to do this automatically, we're going to go to one of the new devices, or rather devices that have been ported over from Max for Live. It is now in the modulators category here, and that is the LFO. An LFO is a low frequency oscillator. So that is a, an oscillator with a frequency that's low enough for you to be able to hear the uh, wave as it sort of goes up and down. So if we map that to a parameter, uh, we can use its amplitude, its level, to modulate that parameter. And you can see if I click now on this start parameter, one more time, if I just undo that with the cross, you click map and then click the parameter you want to map it to, you can now see our sine wave is modulating this parameter up and down, changing that value in exactly the same way that it was when I was dragging this playhead around. Now the range isn't quite right at the moment, it's going outside of this uh, waveform or rather to the silent part of it. So what we can do is we can use the depth and the offset here on LFO to get it to within a more suitable range. So I'm going to bring down the depth and then I'm going to adjust the offset to bring it closer to the start. Somewhere around that is probably about right. also just miss the front part if we wanted to. Yeah, sounds good. I'm going to change it though from a sine wave to a random waveform. And that means you can see instead of it smoothly blending from one value to the next, it actually just jumps now to random positions. And I'm also going to change the rate here by synchronizing it to the door tempo and then bringing the rate down from one bar to 16th notes, because this is the notes that I have within uh, my MIDI clip here. These are all 16th notes, as there are four each beat. So now it jumps to a different position on every note. So to get even more control over these now, I'm actually going to put them into a rack and just assign a few of the key parameters to macros. So if I click on one, hold shift, click on the other, and then either use the keyboard shortcut or right click and choose group. Now they're in a rack together, I can assign different parameters here to the macros. So first up, I'm going to have the filter frequency on macro one. Now, this is another thing you can see about Live 11. If I right click, you can actually have up to 16 macros, having even more complex racks, which is awesome. Or you can have less, which is what we're going to uh, do in this case. We're just going to have four parameters. So I'm assigning the frequency. And instead of assigning this sort of start time here, because it's mapped, I have to assign the offset that's going to, these are going to be our two sort of basic parameters. And then for our varying parameters or ones that are adding variation, I'm going to assign first up the velocity value that we assigned there <clears throat> in the filter section of Simpler. And then the depth on this LFO control, which uh, controls how much the start time is shifted around. So if we bring 
Now, first of all, if we hit this, uh, this minus switch here, you can see you can now clean up the display a bit. So now we've just got four macros, so it's nice and tidy. So if I now bring down this velocity control and the depth, now we have a static sound once again. And then we can control the start time using the offset. And then to bring that variation in, we can adjust these two dials down here. So really nice control over our chain there uh, with this rack. To take this a stage further, what we could do is incorporate some of these snapshots, which is another feature in Live 11, another brand new feature. If we click on the little camera icon there, uh, what we can do is click New, and it creates a snapshot of all of these parameters in their current settings. which we can then name, if I right click there, call that one uh, main. Uh, and then I could adjust the parameters. Create new, and that will be maybe like a fill. And if you create one in advance and then you change the parameters, then to update that, you just have to click on the little plus there. So now it will update to whatever is currently set there. So we'll call that just fill two. And now you can hear if I click on these play switches, that it will jump to those particular snapshots. And just like any parameters in live, if I go up here and click on the key switch to go into key map mode, I can then assign these different snapshot trigger buttons to different keyboard keys, QWERTY keyboard keys. So I'm gonna assign Z, X, and C to those three. And now coming out of key map mode, uh, if I turn this key switch off here, so I'm no longer using the QWERTY keyboard to play MIDI instruments, <clears throat> I can then use those keyboard keys to switch to the different snapshots. Hope you've enjoyed this movie. You can find a download link for the rack in the video description. And for more tips like this, head to producetech.com where there are tons of courses on Ableton Live by myself and the professional artists on the site. Or you can try out the membership with the free 14 day trial, which gives you access to all courses along with bonus weekly content in the form of tutorials, downloads, and live streams. Hope to see you there.